My name is Lisa, and I work as an employee at a certain company. Since there isn't much overtime, I can balance both my work and personal life well. And during lunch breaks. Well, Lisa, your homemade bento always looks so delicious. Thanks, but your bento always looks amazing too, Mia. Really? Today, I just threw all kinds of fillings into this huge rice ball. Wait, a huge rice ball? Yeah, I didn't have time this morning, so I just mashed everything that was supposed to be my bento into one. Mashed everything? Wow, that really is big. Once I started, I realized there wasn't enough rice, so I just kept adding more. It kind of turned into a snowball situation. I... I see. But hey, it looks like a really fun rice ball, doesn't it? Well then, let's swap lunches. Sure, maybe tomorrow. But let's eat quickly before we run out of time. You just said sure while totally rejecting my offer. So, you just don't want to eat this rice ball, right? No, it's not like that, right? Come on, if you can't say it straight, it's like you already did. This is my colleague Mia. We always have lunch together like this. And then... Whoa, no way. Mia actually brought a giant rice ball. Oh, hey, Yabami. I just didn't have time to make a proper bento today. Still, nobody usually brings a rice ball this big. And wait, you stuffed it with tamagoyaki and everything. That's wild. It's pretty bold, huh? It's efficient. No dishes to wash. And I can eat it anywhere. Hold on, is this rice ball actually kind of genius? Um, Mia, maybe not that genius. My colleague Yabami has a laid-back personality and tends to drag people into things, so I usually try not to get too involved. But then, a week later... So, I've set up a group date for our next day off. Yay! Oh, really? Good luck with that. Hope you meet someone great. Wait, why are you both acting like bystanders? You two are coming too, you know. Ha! Huh? We're also going? Yeah, we never agreed to this. And you didn't even ask us. Well, I'm telling you now. And by the way, your attendance is non-negotiable. So don't even think about backing out or cancelling last minute. Don't ruin the vibe, okay? Without asking, Yabami set up a group date out of the blue. I really didn't want to go, but I figured refusing would only cause more trouble, so I reluctantly agreed. And then, on the day of the group date. Ugh. I made it here, but I'm really not feeling this. Excuse me. Oh, good evening. You're here for the group date, right? Yes, that's right. I'm Lisa. I'm Noah. Nice to meet you. And you don't have to be so tense, really. Sorry, I'm not used to these kinds of things. I get it. Actually, I'm just here to even out the numbers tonight. Oh, is that so? I kind of got signed up without realizing it. Haha, sounds like we're in the same boat. How about we just enjoy a quiet drink together? That sounds nice. Thank you, looking forward to tonight. The group date started with me feeling tense and out of place, but thanks to Noah, who was in a similar situation, I felt like I might be able to get through it. And then... Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, look Mia, Lisa actually made it. I can hear you without the shouting. Lisa, let's do our best tonight, yeah. Right. What's with the two of you looking so unenthused? Anyway, I invited Lisa because having her next to me makes me look even cuter. Oh. I see, well, that makes sense. Of course. Wait, whoa, that guy over there is super cute. Excuse me, what's your name? Noah. Wow, even your name is attractive. This is amazing. I can't believe there's such a handsome guy here. The organizer must have known and kept quiet. Ah, uh, well, I'm really just here to help with the numbers. Oh, so you're like a rare character. I'm so glad I set this up. Did she seriously just call him a rare character right to his face? Hey Noah, why don't you come chat with me instead of with her over there? Even if you're here as a filler, you should enjoy yourself, right? I have a feeling I can make this a really fun night for you. Yabami began to sideline me while trying to monopolize the conversation with Noah, despite her rather rude comments. Noticing Noah didn't seem interested, I was about to intervene when... Yabami, aren't you married? Should you even be here? Wait, seriously, married? No way. Are you actually married? Well, no way. You must be mistaken, right, Noah? Haha, <laughs> you're kidding, right? Well, admitting it right away would be a bit much, wouldn't it? By the way, do you know Shota from our company? He's a co-worker of mine. Um, 
I don't think I know anyone by that name. Really? People forget their exes at work that easily. So? Yabami set up a group date with people who know her ex. Unbelievable. How could she think this was okay? Oh, well, was that the case? Haha, <laughs> I totally didn't realize. But hey, let's not dwell on that. We're here to have fun. Sorry. I don't think I can enjoy a group date with someone who's married. So you're really not going to admit it then? War, seriously, stop it. I'm not married. Come on, you two. Don't just stand there. Back me up here. Um, even if you say that, there's not much we can do. We don't really know each other outside work, so I don't know your personal life at all. Interesting. No personal details shared with colleagues. Quite a foral approach. Well, if you're going to take risks, maybe that's for the best. I'm telling you, enough. Why are you coming at me so hard? Yabami was clearly getting irritated, especially as Noah continued pressing her. Then, a new voice cut in. Noah's so insistent because there's an actual victim involved here. Oh, by the way, this is Oliver, my colleague. He's the one who told me you're married. Wait, so you're the one who started spreading these lies? Are they really lies? Though, I've heard you're known for getting several men to spoil you with gifts. Several men? And spoiling you with gifts? Unbelievable. The level of greed here is insane. That's ridiculous. You can't believe everything he says. But now that you mention it, Yabami, you're always decked out in luxury brands. Even for a single woman it seemed. Excessive. What? So you were looking at me like that this whole time? Well, when you're constantly sporting stuff way beyond your means, people tend to talk. I just assumed you had a side hustle or something. But to think it was funded by a bunch of different guys. She goes to these mixers, sizes up the guys, and bleeds them dry. She's called the ant lion of the dating scene. And by the way, an ant lion is a larval form. It eventually turns into a lace wing, a fragile, thin winged creature. Not to be overly specific, but I think it's a fitting name. Hold up. Are you trying to make me sound bad on purpose? You're just making things up. Unless you have proof, this conversation is over. Determined to end the conversation, Yabami tried to cut things off. However, Oliver wasn't about to let that happen. Oh, you can't just end this conversation that easily. If you're going to accuse someone, you should at least bring in some witnesses. Witnesses? You don't mean. That's right. I'm your ex-boyfriend number one, Shota. I'm your ex-boyfriend number two, Naotsugu. And I'm your ex-boyfriend number three, Mashiro. These three rejected suitors are here to testify against your wrongdoings. Re-rejected suitors? I can't say I dislike their refreshing boldness. This is just too ridiculous. You're all just bitter over being dumped and making up lies. No, they're serious about this. They're actually planning to take legal action against you. Take legal action? Are you serious? This is just a grudge from a bunch of guys who can't get dates. Well, I guess what we did could be seen as jealousy. But that jealousy led us to the truth. A detective told us that you've been married for quite some time. Wait, you guys hired a detective to dig into my life. At first, they thought they could uncover things on their own, fueled by bitterness. But watching a woman we once loved flirt with other guys was unbearable. That's when we had a revelation. It's best to leave the investigation to the professionals. We thought it might just be too timing, but to find out you're actually married. This feels a bit pathetic and fragile. Well, I suppose it's better than being too reckless. So you've been tailing me and now you want to sue me. With that petty mindset, it's no wonder I dumped you. Why don't you invest that time and energy into bettering yourselves instead? Ek, as expected of Yobami. You can really hit hard in a situation like this. Shota, don't give up. It's not over yet. We haven't lost. Exactly. Even if we seem pathetic or petty, we've worked hard for our dreams. You guys are right. Listen, Yabami, no matter how critical you get, we won't back down. For the crime of toying with our hearts while being married, we'll make you pay. Thanks to the detective, we have solid evidence. With this, we're demanding compensation for all the money we've spent on you. As Yabami was confronted with a demand for compensation, her demeanor shifted to one of trembling agitation. Enough already. You guys are really going to sue me. Are you serious? You're just proving how pathetic you are letting a woman trick you into giving her money. If you had any sense, you wouldn't even think about doing something like that. Yay! It's so pathetic that it almost makes me want to cry. 
But there's something way more important than our silly pride. What could that possibly be? I've been doing my part when it comes to dealing with this. I know you're the type to just take it lying down. That's true. If I were alone, I'd probably be soaking my pillow right now. But we're not alone. We're a team, the Frillieters. One stands for someone, while someone stands for one. For that, we can overcome any shame. If it were just me suffering, that would be fine. But you're trying to take advantage of men. That kind of barbarism can't be tolerated. They're ready to fight you for their fellow comrades and all men. Fuck. It looks like you're seriously planning to sue me. But too bad, the world is sweet for women these days. If you try to force me into a corner, I can just muddle through the compensation. Wait a second. You're not thinking of piling on more lies, are you? Lies? Head, I'm just doing everything I can to shake up the trouble that's come my way. I won't hesitate to use any means necessary to achieve my goals. You do realize there's evidence from the detective, right? How can you think you can resist this? Why don't you just admit it and apologize already? There's no way you had a good reason for doing all this. As Mia confronted Yabami, who showed no sign of remorse, the tension escalated. Ha. Don't make me laugh. This is about the very essence of who I am. This beauty that draws men in, even though I'm married. That proves I am who I am. The gifts I receive are just the price for being with someone like me. So, that's your true nature? True nature? No, beauty is everything in this world. That's a fact. That's why cabarets and host clubs exist, and why so much money flows around. Beauty is an absolute power. Sure, beautiful things are attractive. But that doesn't just apply to appearances, does it? Exactly. You might be pretty, but... Deceiving people to get their money isn't beautiful at all. So what? It's just a fitting punishment for people who only see appearances. If you're frustrated, then why don't you rise to my level? Who would want to get on such a sinking ship? What are you going to do in 10 years? Do you think you can stay beautiful forever? Everyone knows that's why they're desperately honing their inner selves. That's a loser's theory. No matter how old you get, a beautiful person stays beautiful. As long as there are men willing to give, I can maintain my beauty. Losers who can't fight on the front lines should just lick each other's wounds in silence. I understand your point well. It seems you seriously need to reflect on what you've done. Are you talking about the compensation? For just three people? Ha ha ha. I can just tell my new man whatever to make him pay. I wonder if it'll really go that smoothly. When did you start thinking you were only being sued by three people? Ha. What are you trying to say? Do you remember how many men you've had give to you? Every single one is your enemy. What? All of them? Are you serious? I told you we hired a detective. Right. We've already investigated all your past victims. You'll be sued for compensation by dozens of people. Do you really think there will be someone willing to pay that amount? No way. Wait, this is bad. This is really bad. Looks like you finally understand the situation, but it's too late to panic now. We came today to deliver your checkmate. You'll receive a bill soon, so tremble as you count your sins. Wait, are you serious? Does this mean I have no way out? How much? No, why are you even suing me? No matter what beliefs or thoughts you have, they're not reasons to deceive others. If you understood that, you wouldn't have had to go through all this. Now you realize your reasoning was flawed, right? Why don't you just go home? If you stay like this, your husband will leave you. Uh, right, if he finds out, divorce, dead. I'll have to manage somehow with this nightlife. But I have no money. What should I do? With those words, Yabami mumbled to herself and left the shop. Soon after, she received demands for compensation that exceeded four digits, and feeling overwhelmed, she decided to ignore them. However, a formal notice arrived, prompting her husband to finally find out about everything. Despite her desperate excuses, the amount was too significant to dismiss, leading to the revelation of her infidelity and eventual divorce with her husband also seeking compensation from her. As a result, Yabami fell into a staggering amount of debt due to the compensation payments, and in her struggle to repay it, she could only watch as her appearance deteriorated day by day, trapped in a painful existence. Meanwhile, I... And that's why, cheers. Cheers! Nothing beats a beer after work. Nia, you always know how to enjoy your drink. This gathering has become quite the tradition, hasn't it? 
Yeah, I guess we've been drinking quite a bit already. I never thought going to a mixer would lead to such friendships. True, but they say every encounter is a connection from a past life. Then, let's raise our glasses again to celebrate those connections. Cheers. How many times are we going to toast? Since then, we've become quite close and often gather like this. What started as an apology for ruining a mixer turned into a surprising bond, making us feel like old friends. There's something about it, a sense that we can continue to maintain this friendship indefinitely. With that unfounded confidence naturally brightening our expressions, we spent enjoyable moments together, creating cherished memories. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.